Hello and welcome to webinar series from Happiest Health. Happiest Health is a health and wellness knowledge enterprise which will bring you a series of webinars on various health topics. I am Kumaran P and I will be your host for today's session on holistic healing for anxiety and depression. Research by the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans, India, suggested that yoga, in addition to standard antidepressant treatment, can bring relief to patients with major depressive disorder, MDD, and can also bring about early remission. This study also found that early intervention of yoga can lead to good outcomes and better prognosis in mild to moderate depression. Nimhans cites this study as the first one to assess the effect of practicing yoga on a short-term basis on GABA activity, which is the prime modulator of how one feels or perceives among those suffering from depression. The research team are of the view that in current times of pandemic, when almost no one is spared from the burden of maintaining mental well-being, practicing yoga may help one in dealing effectively with stress, fear, anxiety, and depression. This research conducted on 70 people over three and a half years was supported under the Science and Technology of Yoga and Meditation Satyam program of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The research paper was published in the Canadian Journal of Psychiatry earlier this year. As part of the study, yoga, generic yoga consisting of asanas, pranayama, meditation, and relaxation, one hour validated module for depression at Nimhans was given as an add-on for 12 weeks to patients with MDD. While there are research works like these are conducted across the globe, in this panel, we dwell deep by addressing many aspects related to anxiety and depression. Moving further, I would like to introduce our panelists today. We have with us Dr. Purva Ranade. With over a decade of experience, Dr. Ranade is a research awardee, and she's a practicing psychologist and a counselor in the city of Bengaluru, India. She has two decades of experience in counseling children, adolescents, adults, and parental guidance. She also teaches and trains post-graduation students in the Department of Psychology at many esteemed universities. She also does depression and stress-related counseling and therapy for children and adults. She's actively engaged in conducting sessions on stress management, mental health awareness, parenting, and work-life balance for corporates, teachers, and other stakeholders. We welcome you, ma'am. Next, we have Ms. Sadhana. She is a pranic healer, yoga, and meditation teacher. Over a decade now, she has been practicing pranic healing, which was inspired from her own personal incidents in life. She has studied all the advanced courses on pranic healing. She started her career by healings on two to three cancer patients a day in the same medical hospital where she was being trained as pranic healer. She's also a trained in Iyengar yoga from the Himalayan ashram and have been practicing and teaching Patanjali, Vinyasa and Ashtanga yoga and teaching meditation practices to help clients with their healing. We welcome you, Ms. Sadhana. Thank you. Next up, we have Dr. Pavitra N. She is a senior resident at the Department of Psychiatry at the MS Ramaya Hospital, Bengaluru, India. She has worked on various research projects at Nimhans India. Her interests are in adult psychiatry, addiction medicine, women's mental health, and psychotherapy. We welcome you, Dr. Pavitra. Thank you. To start with the topic of discussion today, I would like to bring in Dr. Purva first. I just wanted to understand, Dr. Purva, what has been your experience with increasing incidence of anxiety getting reported? Also, what is the difference between anxiety and depression? Is it one leading to another? Carry on, doctor. You can unmute yourself and then go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, doctor. Please go. At the outset, I would like to appreciate your 
अवेरनेस प्रोग्राम ऑफ हेल्थीएस्ट हैप्पीएस्ट माइंड्स एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू लिसन टू दिस व्हाट आई एम शेयरिंग विद यू माय एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग व्हाट आई फील इज यस ऑफ कोर्स अराउंड 70 परसेंट देर आर इंक्रीज इन द इंसिडेंस सिंस कोविड ऑफ एंजाइटी एज वेल एज डिप्रेशन mainly what i could found the reasons are widened gap between expectation and reality increased sensitivity to criticism lower patience levels lower tolerance levels and low coping mechanisms those were one of the core areas which i feel that those are triggering more and more number of cases into anxiety and even depression as well now let us me give you the brief about what is anxiety and what is depression as you have asked in my opinion anxiety relates to more of a thinking okay it is underlying fear at the same time i feel that when a person undergoes intensive worry excessive worry as well as the persistent worry later on it happens that the person it hampers his daily living it starts interfering in its daily routine and that is a matter of concern when anxiety mounts to that level and it starts interfering his daily schedules okay now let us see and understand why is it happening maybe underlying fear not able to you know understand why out of stepping out of comfort zone not only that a one of the major factors what i feel is fear of unknown lack of coping mechanisms to accept the reality to step out of comfort zone or low self concept where what people will think about me that also i have seen as a pattern where people fall into this category of anxiousness anxiety apart from that when dealing with uncertainty that is what i feel that people are little bit lacking on their perspective to life this is my worry about okay i have don't want to go out what people will think about me i have handled so many cases like this that with small perspective to life they come out of it you know so anxiety basically is uh, hampering their thinking cognition right. okay right. now coming to depression i feel that it is more than a low mood okay or a sad mood what i feel suppose if a person is exposed to a sudden trauma sudden threat correct correct you know correct person is not equipped at that time yes yes that is one of the major factors not only that like economic crisis see during the time of covid we have understood all that right so See. loss of loved ones people are not able to cope yes even at that point in time a person starts feeling low about his self concept also i am no good his core beliefs are threatened like i am no good there is no light at the end of the tunnel feeling of hopelessness feeling of worthlessness feeling of hope loss of hope is absolutely generated in that person and that person is not able to act on that that is what is depression all about and nowadays anxiety and depression are the two terms which are commonly used like even a small children also use i am depressed you know what exactly do they mean by that that is where a professional help comes into play 
Correct. So when we're talking about yeah. this, Doctor uh, Purva. So yeah. this, when you when you're describing about what is anxiety, what is depression. So uh, another question that comes to um, mind is about. So is one leading to another? Uh, does anxiety leads to depression, or depression leads to anxiety? There's there is this overlapping. a uh, feeling overlapping um, emotions that goes through so uh, how do, how does that happen yes if ab- absolutely it is the valid question that if it one leads to another yes i believe in that because i have seen those type of cases where anxiety when not intervened at the right time if it is not you know approached at the professional level at the right time the person right. may slowly go into a down and downward spiral and leads to depressive mode correct you know? correct correct even to the clinical depression which is a psychological condition you understand yes yes so, thank you dr um, purva yeah. i'll i'll come back to you uh, with another uh, perspective to what you have told um yeah. with that uh, i would ask dr pavitra in case um, if you can unmute yourself and answer um tell us about the mind and body correlation uh, dr purva was talking a lot about uh, how these two manifest each other so tell us about something about mind and body correlation when anxiety is affecting most of the youngsters do you see a solution in exercises and yoga uh, apart from the psychological therapies uh this is the most important concept to be understood there is a close relationship between mind and body you can uh, consider the body being the hardware okay of a computer then the mind becomes the software or the central processing unit okay, okay. so it is the mind which has control over the body and at the same time if the body is not working it affects your mental status also okay if you uh i have to understand about the emotions per se physiology of emotions how do they arise and uh, there is a concept of uh, two way theory where the bodily changes will arise um, make you experience different emotions for example when there is sudden increase in heart rate okay or there is excess to sweating and tremulousness then you experience kind of anxiety what is happening with my body when my uh, heart is pacing so fast do uh, am i going to get a heart attack okay you become apprehensive and you feel anxious at the same time whenever there is a some threat some uncertainty like madam pointed out fear of unknown Uh, then you, uh, you become too anxious and whenever you become anxious there is autonomic arousal okay and that in turn results to bodily changes like increased heart rate increased blood pressure okay there is uh, in uh, excessive sweating tremors the dryness of mouth then this makes a person focus more on the uh, this bodily changes and uh, and this further increases the anxiety okay there is certainly there is some threat uh, to my life or my integrity okay and uh, this explains the close relationship and at the same time if you want to uh, un- uh, understand more the uh, whenever the person is in anxiety or in depression directly there are physical changes also which happen like there is reduced appetite there is uh, disturbance in sleep and uh, there is loss of weight loss of libido okay and there is changes in your gas uh, gastrointestinal uh, system which leads which can lead to either constipation or increased uh, uh, frequency of passing stools like the uh, they make it experience uh, diarrhea urgency of uh, nutrition okay all this uh, show the clear evidence of uh, relationship between uh, mind and body at the same time whenever the person is too anxious on the edge anybody can make out that their body is tight okay and they are unable to function both physically and mentally up to their ability okay now uh, this is where you need to fo- focus on both mental health and physical health for your over- overall well being and uh, coming to your next question uh, regarding yoga and exercise right um uh, exercise is something which everybody knows which everybody is aware that it is required for your physical health and something to know more is that it is important for your mental health as well like both go hand in hand uh, exercise means what kind of exercise exercise which actually 
most most of the parts of your body where you strain yourself you uh, any simple walk or uh, even a jogging okay which or uh, moving your limbs wherever you are just getting up from your place where you are sitting at least once in 10 minutes okay helps your body as well as <clears throat> mind to be healthy okay uh, there is a saying that the longer you sit the shorter you live okay the more sedentary lifestyle actually reduces your okay, health okay is is about uh when you are when the person has some mild depression or moderate depression it is uh, known to be helpful okay this is used in uh, behavioral therapy as well okay right, right. uh, has one more role is in counteracting the side effects of medications like many medications will cause weight gain so we advise the patients that to counteract that you need to be physically active mind be mindful of what you eat and your physical exercise and uh, take care of your weight okay um uh, with respect to yoga yoga is something more professional okay which uh, the person needs to be and uh, trained they need to learn how exactly to do it and these are something which are more specific okay and like you already discussed in mild to moderate depression yoga has been found to be like equally effective to other modalities of treatment in uh, whenever in the studies however when it comes to severe depression we would recommend that the person has to take the uh, medication medical treatment and along with that take uh, yoga as an add on okay, okay. beside all this management protocol it's always better that they see professional help and get an evaluation uh, don't go by subjective evaluation always and uh, uh, ask them, uh, your uh, um, psychologist or psychiatrist advice you decide which uh, therapy you uh, which is appropriate for you and it's your informed decision you take the ultimate decision okay absolutely and, uh, one more thing i just want to point out is when uh, why i uh, am stressed about evaluation is there are uh, some patients who try to do some meditation then they feel that i am unable to do or it's not helping me it is not helping you because you are not in a state to meditate when you are doing anxiety you can focus you can do meditation and at this point there are some patients who have vulnerability to turn into psychosis okay those patients when they focus on their thoughts when they focus try to do meditation it actually worsens their mental health yeah they precipitate into psychotic symptoms that right. is what would advise go for an evaluation whenever you think i have a problem okay otherwise when you are you are healthy no there are no stress, stress there are no symptoms even then make yoga and exercise as the part of your lifestyle to have a healthy living okay this is about promoting your health okay enrich right. mental health and physical health so that you prevent the uh, future in anxiety and depression right right um, i understand uh, dr pavitra so it's, it's about the entire um, mind and body actually correlates and uh, the way you told us about uh, how each and every uh, symptoms of any kind of diseases start with mind and body that because of that correlation ship um, also very importantly that you pointed out is that seek help seek help when required and uh, while seeking help a lot of them take a, a practices of um, different holistic approach like yoga meditation some of them have to be put on medications and all of that so um, coming to uh, ms sadhna um, i would i would little um, want to talk about little more about the practices that you follow um, if you could uh, tell us about uh, what are the yoga tips or asanas that you suggest people to overcome anxiety okay first of all thank you very much for having me um so before we uh, i go to the question of the tips and the asanas we all know right the yoga is the union of mind body and soul on a very basic level if we go on a deeper level it it's uh, uh, the you know the union of your individual soul with the universal soul that that becomes a too abstract notion for us to understand and that is why we come on the basic level right so these days what is happening is 
yoga is also because of um, uh, the age we are in the depression and anxiety because of covid and everything going on it has sort of become a business so it's not only talking about or doing the asanas but it's about how to do the asanas in a correct manner and how do we understand if what we are doing is correct because a lot of them i have seen they practice they follow the videos yoga videos online they just do the asanas and they they don't really understand what they are doing so in those cases instead of helping it in fact gives you know it doesn't help us it might give us some injury some mus- muscle strain right so it's very very important to understand to do the yoga in correct manner and what is yoga it's about creating a space to for a breath to flow it's about aligning our body our mind body and spirit right so when our when our spine is aligned we would be able to hold the asana for a longer period of time and when we are holding a, a asana for a longer period of time that's when we tend to get into a very deeper and meditative state right so we will uh, now we'll go to the uh, tips or asanas that that can help us to overcome anxiety for the beginners normally i actually suggest very very simple asanas very simple relaxation poses and some breathing and chanting so for example a uh, badakon asana so badakon asana is something where a person lies down on uh, you know on their back on a mat and they join their feet together and they put their arms in a relaxed manner and just focus on their breathing right so this is something very very simple that anybody can do but when we do it within 5 minutes we would see and i have seen with a lot of my clients the beginners that it actually helps them to calm down from 30 to 40% just in the first session you know just lying down and joining your feet together with your knees apart right and then uh, sarvang asana that is shoulder stand the shoulder stand is normally Uh, what we do what we are taught in ayangar we use a lot of props so when we use a lot of props it allows us to create space like i said for our breath to flow for our body to heal because if we are not breathing and we are just in a pose because we want to be more flexible what is happening is our breath is stuck and when our breath is stuck we are not growing our body we are not connecting we are not being aware of our body the idea is to be aware of present be aware of our breath be aware of our body and that's when the healing happens right so and the second asana sarvang asana just by doing sarvang asana for maybe one minute daily it will actually normalizes and balances all our hormones which results in balancing our emotions right and then we can do a simple asana savasana just lying down right just lying down and relaxing but focusing on the breath just lie down on the mat but make sure you're focusing on the breath focusing on the inhalation and exhalation so that also if just practice for 10 minutes regularly and daily allows our mind to calm down and then along this just for the beginners i teach very two or three asanas is because most of these cases they are very anxious they are very restless right so and then i go on to breathing simple breathing where they close their eyes and they focus on their inhalation and exhalation the awareness might wander so so i teach them we teach them to bring it back to their breathing just inhale slowly and exhale just by practicing 5 minutes for a week there is uh, we saw lot of improvement in our clients you know they became lot more calmer they became lot more happier had more clarity just with 5 minutes in a week's time okay right and yes and then along with that we teach them simple chanting you know it could be om it could be om shanti maybe depending on case to case basis you know 5 minutes and then it it increases then slowly as they improve we move on to advanced level so it is seen that when okay. they when we chant om it has a cleansing effect it removes it cleanses our energy it cleanses our thoughts the unwanted thoughts that we carry right so if we practice chanting whenever whenever 
a person is free, you know, so just give five to 10 minutes daily. It allows our minds to calm down because it disintegrates and removes all the unwanted thoughts and unwanted energies from our system by purifying our energies. Right, Very right, 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 right. Um, I also on the same line, Ms. Nadna, um, we've also seen, uh, of course, when you talk about uh, yoga and the entire broad perspective of what and how people have been um, using yoga as a tool, we've also seen a researchers that has always included um, uh, recently uh, yoga as a therapeutic tool. Tell us about your experiences in dealing anxiety and depression amongst people, uh, be it with Anami or be it alone as a, a consultant that you do. Um, w- how do you deal with it um, amongst people? Okay. Yes, uh, actually, uh, I have been uh, dealing uh, through Anami and I've been associated with Anami. And actually, Anami is a is an online platform that has helped a lot of people to get help, you know, in a situation where they were actually struggling. It's a platform where they have a lot of guides, you know, including healers, meditation instructor, yoga instruction, instructor, life coaches, right. you know, dharma teachers. There are a lot of other guides. And one has to just go on the platform and look for whatever guide they're looking for <clears throat> and connect with the guide and seek help. So through Anami, I've been associated with Anami for quite some time. And through Anami, I have come across during especially during covid and after the covid and in fact still today a lot of stress and anxiety uh, cases and the stress and anxiety cases that happens is because of uh, like uh, you know the dr purva just mentioned that because of the underlying fear and even as an energy healer we also see at one of the reasons where uh, stress and anxiety happens because of this underlying fear of mm-hmm already what has happened of what is in the past and what is going to happen in the future. So yeah. normally people are so worried, so so concerned, so fearful of every step they take. So in the beginning, it's not even easy for me because it's it, they are not able to follow the instructions. So we actually follow a technique of mindfulness, which is very, very simple technique where you know one has to be aware of the present moment right just be aware of now be aware of everything that is going on around us and uh, mindfulness by the way has nothing to do with mind mindfulness is actually creating awareness so what is awareness awareness is when we are receiving right and when a lot of people think it's on it's focusing on something when we focus it's we become, we go outward. But the idea of mindfulness is to go inward. Mm -hmm. So we are receiving and it comes from our heart. The center of our heart is our heart chakra, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the center of our emotions, our love and our sensitivity. So through our heart, that awareness comes and it makes us like, for example, a mother and a child are very very connected. So mother is very, very aware (coughs) of what's going on in her kid's life which is very very aware and connected and that's what we do in mindfulness we ask them to be aware of what is going on including their breath you know go on for a walking meditation uh, you know if they can if, if they are okay not wearing their sleepers and walking mm-hmm. on the grasses we ask them to feel how this how they you know when the grass touches their soul or their feet how do they feel Right. So in the beginning, we ask them to do this simple, simple task so that they are able to follow. Otherwise, they are not able to follow. And before that, in fact, we don't even take up the cases, severe stress and anxiety. uh, The one who are not seeking medical uh, support until they are not seeking medical support. We do not take up the cases. We only take it up when they have a medical support in severe cases. Yes. <clears throat> so okay. we start with this. Yes. Yes. Um, Ms. Sadna, I would come back to that point of uh, how do you deal with certain people on and what are the difficulties that you face with uh, people with anxiety and depression? I'll come a little bit later in the discussion. Um, uh, with, the, with this, I would again uh, like to ask Dr. Purva, um, what goes um, for a toss in people's uh, life in terms of their everyday routine? Uh, do they stop exercising? Uh, what do you suggest them to get physically active? 
okay here we all know that fast pace of life what we are talking day in and day out but my question is can we pause we are not able to pause so that is the main reason why our routine has been changed there are many valid and valid reasons for it why we are not pausing but do we ask ourselves at what cost nobody asks that okay is it worth nobody asks those questions very true not only that the second aspect is content and context of a living idea of entertainment family concept of family you know relationships idea of having food eating i mean sleep patterns you know everything has been changed okay but we are with the time we are not saying it is wrong or right we are dealing with it but how do we deal with that right that right. is the problem one more thing i would like to focus upon is self disciplining is the key but due to the technology revolution there is a thin line of use and abuse here is happening that also is one of the triggering factors which are moving we towards little bit of mental health issues yeah. increased mental health issues i would say so another aspect is very important is our body cycle body clock are we listening to that i see 11 o'clock you know gyms are still running ulon what do we say so conscious aware of making our choices not only that when we take a decision about it the question is do we ask that at what cost right very true and is it worth these yes. both questions need to be answered at this fast pace of life We right. are not saying that we are going to change. No, we have to live with the time, right. but being aware about it and making a conscious and aware choices and taking decision about it. At least we can do that. Like okay. Ma'am also mentioned, everybody is aware about exercises, but again yes. I mentioned at what time? Are we understanding our own circadian rhythms? Are yes. we following that? Are we having food habits intact? or are we falling prey to entertainment zones netflix serials yes you need entertainment ideas of leisure has been changed mm. right so all these things has a collective you know impact very true on very both, true on both physical as well as mind what is that something that someone can do to be physically huh. active so yes. th that is something that uh, triggers everyone to think about I, i we understand that these are all the drawbacks that each and every one are going through and especially with people with anxiety and depression undergo this a lot more a yes. lot more of binge watching to lot more of binge eating to all of it keeps happening uh, but then um, how do they motivate themselves to keep physically active so Huh. yeah so one thing is they should ask why i am doing this why i should do this it is for your own good so it requires little bit of self disciplining which at the outset it might they feel difficult to follow but once they start getting the benefits of it i am very sure, very sure that they will start following these patterns and physically active is the need because it keeps your mind body soul everything in synergy right right so that needs to be making them aware about why i am doing this so that is the crux of it then giving them and monitoring them guiding them through to why it is important for your own sake very true very true absolutely yeah, and then let them be aware and make the conscious choices very true uh, dr purva you you very specifically spoke about how do you need to be aware and everything um uh, the same thread that i want to ask dr pavitra as well um uh, dr pavitra we always say a sound mod a sound mind in a sound body mm. uh, this has been established um, phenomenon uh, what ha exactly happens in the in the brain 
that makes someone suffer from lack of interest, fearfulness, and come to a stage of hopelessness. Tell us about the success stories where people have overcome depression. This is something that we want to know. Yeah. Okay. Like I already spoke about the relationship between mind and body. Uh, in uh, cases where there is anxiety or depression, there are neurochemical changes which happen in the brain but in terms of, like you mentioned about GABA. GABA affects uh, your emotion. And whenever GABA is reduced, okay, there is increase in anxiety and depression. And whenever there is GABA secretion, the increase in GABA, you feel a sense of calmness, happiness, okay. And uh, this, uh, in, along with GABA, there are other neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, which are also controlling your emotions, uh, experiences, as well as the behavior, sleep, libido, and appetite, okay. And this also affects your thinking. Whenever there is decreased in GABA, decreased alternative transmission, there is low mood, sadness. A person picks up more of pessimistic cues, negative things, okay, negative automatic thoughts, we say. There is negative view about self, others, and the world. This will lead to hopelessness, worthlessness, and suicidal ideas, okay. And um, intense anxiety also re results from this uh, in, uh, imbalance in the neurotransmitters. In anxiety, it is more of uh, fear and the thoughts, apprehension, what next, what next, or dwelling in the past which happened and this shouldn't have happened and things like that. In depression, it is more of everything is pessimistic, okay, everything is negative and this is the end of the world. Everything feels slow, everything uh, feels do dark, okay, and uh, the person feels very uh, uh, low in, on energy, okay. Then uh, even the hobbies which they used to feel uh, when they used to get pleasure earlier, it doesn't give pleasure. So when it doesn't give pleasure, they don't engage in these activities and they don't look forward for any of the activities. There is lack of motivation. Because of lack of motivation, there is uh, reduced uh, ex uh, lifestyle habits like exercise or eating healthy or going out or doing their routine work also and this in turn results in their impairment in functioning at workplace, impairment in physical health, okay, uh, being irregular on their medications, it could be their other uh, medications like diabetics or uh, hypertension, they stop taking medications that adversely affects these conditions, okay. This is how both their physical and mental health takes a uh, toll and they go on worsening, okay. okay. And yeah, tell, tell us a little bit more about some success stories where people have overcome depression, doctor. Okay. Um, there are many patients who come with depression because it's quite a common condition. And usually with mild depression, rarely people come. They think that okay, uh, the first of all, it takes time for them to become, become aware that there is something wrong with them, that they are depressed. Uh, and they try to somehow uh, manage themselves, will wait and see. Usually they come in moderate to severe depression. And the dramatic change and success you will find when they are in severe depression. The person also can make out that the, uh, they have become so slow. For example, a middle-aged woman who was working in IT company to take. And uh, the person used to feel that even to get up in the morning, it's a burden. Okay. The moment wake up in the morning, uh, everything feels very, very dull, um, this is the end of the world, why should I go for work? Even they don't feel like taking care of themselves, no motivation okay. to wake up, no motivation to dress themselves well, okay? okay. And, uh, then uh, with great difficulty they reach the work and there are so many targets to reach, okay? They are unable to concentrate at work, unable to meet the targets, unable to function up to their mark, their functioning comes down, there are a lot of backlogs, they start procrastinating and then uh, this becomes more obvious uh, in terms of their work output, then they okay. get back from uh, their employers, okay, and uh, they have significant disturbed sleep, because of that there is uh, daytime, uh, there will be reduced uh, uh, concentration, which again impairs their uh, functioning. And uh, with respect to their outlook of life, they start becoming more pessimistic, okay? Like, 
they are not married the family keeps on telling them look for proposals and all they keep saying that i don't believe in these things or there's going to be more of pessimistic outcome there are more separations happening and um, their outlook towards life itself actually changes okay and they focus more on negative things like nobody is in good terms with me or someone criticized me uh, i didn't get a good project okay well um, when they have come for treatment and they have taken treatment both medication as well as the psychotherapy uh, subsequently they find the change initially within two weeks they make out the change in terms of sleep and appetite biological functions show improvement okay. and then subsequently the overall improvement takes at least one month to be noticed then they can make out a change in the quality of their mood their okay. energy levels their functioning is picking up and their outlook towards life is improving okay and they feel like living okay. and then it's uh, it's better everything gets now they look forward for living they start their hobbies okay their functioning also improves and right. uh, they uh, start doing well in their job they start getting better job opportunities better projects okay then again their life gets back to normal great it's it's glad that we actually uh, listen to all of these success stories because uh, someone um, as doctors as experts that you pursue uh, someone to come out of it um, the the constant uh, push that is uh, required on on the same lines i would like to ask dr purva um, uh, sometimes people themselves cannot come out uh, of of any of those uh, troubles that they are undergoing what can caregivers Uh, parents family members of the affected persons can do to help them overcome anxiety or extreme loss of hope okay um as a caregiver your responsibility is double why okay. because you are able to think you know rationally logically practically which mm. at that moment in time the patient is not able to do that mm. so first and foremost important thing what the caregiver or the family or the um, people who take care of them need to understand that the person should not be labeled that is the first thing they should take care of second thing is no advices everybody is in a hurry to give what you should do and what you should not do please limit that okay there should not be any bombardment of suggestions also okay because that gets more irritation to the patient mm. okay another important thing is your doctor has been telling this this is a constant remindering statement avoid please do this please do that have you not done that instead of that go for a open ended questions okay would you like to do this not only that the sentence should be shall we do it that we give them that support feeling of support they it is very important for them at that point in time instead of focusing on you it should be us that they feel more emotionally connected as well as a caregiver as a family member they don't feel lost they don't feel lonely that i am the only one who is undergoing this kind of conditions you know another important thing is giving them positive strokes how do we give don't elaborate keep it minimalistic <laughs> that yes. is very good no stories you really did it well in a five step five words in a sentence that helps you know it gives them that moral boost another important thing is sharing your own experiences and saying it's okay no it is not okay i would i would always say don't say that it is okay it is not okay for the patient so don't give any false hopes no you it will be you will get your no that has to be avoided at any cost you know false hopes no it is okay no don't share your experiences unless otherwise asked because 
they still cannot connect and associate. So again, it comes under the false hopes. Don't give them false hopes. Right, 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 right. Okay, and that is a very important thing. When I see, I sometimes, many times, I see that if need best, I do give family counseling. How to behave with the patient who is undergoing depression or anxiety. This basically do not label. That is basic important thing. The person is already feeling low, feeling anxious. Why you are not doing? You know, no questions, statements. Very good. Absolutely, doctor. When when you are talking about this, um, when you are actually telling us about no labeling, yes. uh, talking about how do we call us in the entire process, yes. and yes. these are all something that is very 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 small, um, very, small but very, very impactful. Very so impactful. in fact, in fact, to um, also uh, let let the entire panel know, um, even at the happiest health um, as a startup as a knowledge platform. We have shifted from calling uh, any anyone as patients. We do not call them. We call them a person with so and so, or we call them with uh, people uh, with so and so um, particular condition. So we never use the terminology. It's the terminology that makes a lot of difference and the labeling. Yes. Very absolutely. Um, yes, Mr. Kumaran. Yeah. Even at the co-worker yeah. workers. Yeah. I have dealt with so many corporate cases like this with dealing with anxiety. Right. That how they should get the support of their co-workers as well. How right. a manager should be able to identify these kind of symptoms or triggers why the person is behaving the way he behaves. Right. Little bit going one step ahead and knowing the reasons about it. Right. That care should be taken. Definitely, doctor. Um, I understand. I understood with that particular point. On the same line of um, point, Miss um, Sadna, um, I want to ask you: for a person affected with anxiety and depression, uh, having a control over one's own mind is challenging. Uh, this is something that you have always said to us in the last few minutes that uh, you cannot allow someone to actually do that meditation process you cannot allow them to sit in that posture of yoga um, ha so having control over their own mind is so challenging how do you teach them meditation then okay first thing the idea of the whole practices of yoga meditation it's not about getting control over their mind okay. it's about creating the awareness the awareness of their body the awareness of their breath that gives them inner peace and inner calm to have more clarity in life, right? So more calm mind. It's not controlling the mind, but it's controlling our emotions. In this day where everybody is not only depressed and anxious, but is also becoming those emotions. If we have seen a lot of cases, a lot of my clients, everything they see and they understand is from the perspective or through the mirror, or through the eye of those emotions. You know, so it's not only we have them, but we are becoming them is the is something that's becoming even more scary, you know, these days. So when we teach them in the beginning, some of my clients don't even sit down. They don't, they cannot sit down. They're very restless. They sit, they go, they come back. So what we actually do is few sessions. We, we do actually pranic psychotherapy. Pranic psychotherapy is a part of pranic healing and arhatic yoga. Pranic healing and arhatic yoga is an ancient art and science of energy healing, right? So when we perform this energy healing, pranic psychotherapy on them, after a few sessions, they become calmer. And once they are calmer, then we start with, you know, start with teaching them, focusing on their breath. This is the simplest. This is something that anybody can do. And that's when they are able to sit for at least two minutes. The minimum time we ask them to do it for at least some time is for two minutes, focusing on their breath, being aware of their breath. And slowly, within a few days' time, they start to see. Some of them actually are, in the beginning, very skeptic of the whole process, you know, uh, which is very normal, right? So some of them are not even ready to accept it, even if they're there in for the right. session. Right. They're not ready to accept that this can help them. So the receptivity, 
to talk to them, to make them understand and to teach them this easiest process where they not only are listening to what I'm saying, but they are at the same time experiencing it. Their experience is the peace that we talk about. Their experience is the experiencing the changes in their behavior, in their emotions, in their thoughts that we talk about. And that's when they start to become more and more receptive to the whole Very process. Very right? So Very we start with, with psychotherapy for a few sessions. And then we move on to the simple technique focusing on a breath for two minutes. It's in the severe cases. And like I mentioned before, Again, we do not take up uh, clients uh, if they are not seeking medical help in severe cases. So we believe in going hand in hand with medical uh, you know, counseling and with holistic healing. That's when we have seen the results are very quick and very fast. When both is combined together and both work together, the results right. have been very, very quick, right? right. Even in the past, when I was uh, practicing pranic healing back in Ramaya, we had a center inside the Ramaya campus and the doctors and the healers were working together. So there was a research done by Dr. Jayashree, one of the doctors, one of the physicians uh, in Ramaya hospital. And it was shown that when the healing and the medical treatment was done together, the results were miraculous. This is what the doctor said. The results were quicker, faster and miraculous. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Ms. Sadhana. Um, I'll come to the point of what are the challenges uh, that you face in uh, practicing all of these uh, holistic healing um, methods. Um, oh, quickly, with the time constraint, I would like to move to Dr. Pavitra. Um, quickly, uh, or on a, on a brief note, uh, Doctor, if you could tell us um, the need and possibilities to achieve overall sense of well-being with regular exercise, social interaction, and self-care techniques, like Dr. Purva also mentioned, self-care is also something sometimes very important. So if you could just tell us about how do we uh, bring this all together? Yeah, um, this all these things come into picture in terms of promoting the mental health and also prevention of the illnesses, like right. I said. About exercise, I have already stressed in uh, depth. Uh, even the simple just stretching exercise, stretching where you are sitting or just getting up from your sitting place, any kind of uh, physical activity which is possible whenever you are working itself actually helps. Right. Right. Apart from that, at least for half an hour, please dedicate for a simple walk or a jogging, okay, which actually in uh, increases the endorphins in your body. Uh, feel, you feel uh, kind of uh, happiness calmness okay and this helps to improve your sleep as well okay both your metabolism sleep mental health physical health with respect to your uh, control of blood sugars okay it helps then coming to social interaction social interaction is something which is little subjective it depends the need for the person, everybody doesn't uh, look for social interaction, even in, at their normal level. There are some people who are comfortable to be by themselves and they don't, they don't need so much of social interaction except for uh, their work purpose or whenever it is needed. Okay? But for some people who are more sociable, they look forward, they want to meet people, they want to uh, speak, they want to have that uh, appreciation of their work and they need to have some positive regards, affection, they look forward for it. So just saying hi, just interacting in a video conference or just hugging each other, may releases uh, uh, GABA, endorphin, all these positive uh, uh, neurotransmitters which help in feeling happiness. Okay, and uh, that is where uh, it helps. And when one more thing is about in, uh, with respect to uh, social anxiety disorder and things like that, where they lack uh, social skills. And uh, with, with the help of a therapist, they can improve their social skills and uh, improve their social interaction, which in turn helps them to recover from the anxiety disorder completely. Okay, this is about social interaction. One more thing you asked about self-care techniques. Okay. Like ma'am pointed out, it's all about your self-discipline and it's about completely taking care of yourself uh, with respect to the time you give for yourself, the breaks you take from your work, okay, uh, being aware of your uh, condition, both physical and mental, 
noticing when you are actually going to uh, through through stress when you are in the march of breaking when it, you are feeling it is too much i can't handle then seeking help at the right time okay engaging yourself in your hobbies then being mindful of what you eat okay and following good sleep hygiene okay yeah, everyone needs to have an adequate sleep on regular basis unfortunately it is difficult for the even the most educated people uh, to have this basic need of a life everyone can have food but not sleep at the right time uh, so Exactly. Definitely. Um, th- yeah. That's that's the same. That's the same thing when Dr. Puru was also talking about the circadian rhythm. Uh, one needs to know the circadian rhythm. I think uh, that that's where everything comes down to. Um, so sorry to interfere, uh, Dr. Pavitra. You can please carry on. Yeah. Uh, with respect to sleep, some basic things I would stress. Please avoid sleeping during daytime. Have a fixed time to go to bed and to wake up. Even if it is your Sunday, even if it's your day off, please wake up at the same time. And uh, by evening, please avoid any kind of stimulants like coffee, tea, or cigarettes. Okay. And then, uh, please avoid screen time just before your sleep. As far as pos- possible, if you can turn off uh, your mobile phones at least one hour before your bedtime, it actually helps you a lot. And uh, have a habit of reading something just before you go to bed uh, not something adventurous something which calms you whenever you feel little sleepy then you go for bed if you feel you are unable to sleep don't keep on thinking and rolling over on the bed get up and again read something when you feel little sleepy then go back to bed you hey, don't think today i have got sleep very late so i will wake up late no wake up at the right at same time so that that day night next day you will get good sleep okay and yeah. if- Use bed for your work. Don't sit. Don't even sit on the bed. Once you wake up in the morning, do you make uh, do bed making and cover your bed. Please don't sit on the bed until your bedtime. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Pavitra. I think you have summed up uh, the entire thing about how does how do you overcome all of this. But one thing struck to um, this entire conversation, uh, Miss Sadna, uh, when you are talking about the entire holistic healing and everything. uh there are definitely challenges in teaching yoga there are definitely mm-hmm. challenges in teaching meditation or for that matter pranic healing uh for persons with mental health issues and uh, how are you overcoming that if you could just quickly uh, sum it up uh, before we wrap it up okay so the challenges that we come across is like a lot of time people come to us as a last resort you know where they do not find solution any in, in anywhere and they come to us so they come to us but the, at the same time like i already mentioned they do not believe in it they they are they very skeptic about the whole technique and the process so when these things happen we like i said we don't only tell them we actually give them the technique to practice and when they experience it they believe they started to they start to believe in the technique and the process when they start seeing the result you know whatever they're hoping for whatever they are there for and when they start seeing the changes in everything in their life physical mental emotional financial yes. spiritual balance they start believing in it and another thing another uh, challenge that we face is having to follow them the instructions you know sometimes some of them just would like to sit and talk but not do anything so again in that cases in those cases we actually give them the simplest of simplest uh techniques to follow where we tell them we guide them to do it and along with us they are doing it and we continue to guide them along with us we also actually do it with them until they see the changes and they are little better to do it on their own the practice and also the you know to to fight these illnesses or issues one has to practice regular regularly so there is another challenge that people are not regular because they have a lot of uh, excuses you know i don't have time i am tired i have office or um, you know i have this i have that so the idea is to understand that this ch- excuses will continue so we as a guide as a healer or as an instructor how do we help them to understand that these excuses are something that they are creating when they actually want to change their life they can have at least 15 minutes a day to practice and to change it so like i said when we teach them this one minute two minutes technique and we tell them just do it for two minutes and they have to actually tell us every day what time they practiced it 
and they tell us they inform us that they have been practicing and when they see the changes and when we see the improvement in them then we increase the timings then we move to the advanced techniques and that's how we do it thank you thank you uh, ms sadna uh, about giving this entire approach uh, i would like to conclude with uh, dr purva um, uh, ma'am i just wanted to understand uh, what is your approach towards holistic healing uh, in helping persons with anxiety and depression does medicine counseling alone help Uh, you're on mute, ma'am. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So my experiential learning says that only counseling or only medication doesn't help. It depends on the intensity, frequency, and severity of the issue. One thing. Okay. Next issue is when a person comes with any of the issue, my way of looking at it is don't jump to conclusions. First have everything sorted out right from connecting dots of the childhood to till his age so that you will come to know where the problem persists right this right. is anxiety coming out of nature nurture or because of some uh, you know uh, uh, experiences or negative life experiences that is how one should be finding the cause of it first okay here i am not dealing with the symptoms but i would like to up approve the cause itself okay and that becomes easier when you give enough time listen non judgmentally ultimately the aim is to help him or her to help her himself or herself that is the motto okay so it should be he should be able to help him living his life the way he wants understood for understood for that sometimes it also happens that they need life skills yes so depression they need little bit of counseling and they come out of it i have many such in, many many such examples one lady who had come for her husband for that i have developed one model that is i act you can use that model i stands for identification first you need to identify the changes in your body your sleep diet and exercise pattern your thinking patterns if somebody right. says you are not behaving some right way you need to understand so a says for acting on that no no i am fine i'm okay don't do that then c stands for consult okay don't wait consult a professional and t is treat yourself immediately before it goes off hand right. right and that is what is i act and react is resilience building resilience aware about what you are thinking you know then creating enough space for you yourself at the spiritual level also right 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 you know? and then it comes to the t that is reacting is you are free to choose and act on that absolutely yeah, yeah. so i act and react is my model of holistic healing which i have been practicing for years okay so many that, times that's okay. yeah many a times it so happens that a person needs a listener but you should be able to connect the dots you should be having the, giving enough time to listen to him non judgmentally right right then it, comes, then it comes to the objective testing that also is required because only subjective does not give a holistic perspective very true you have to have objective of objective testing psychometric testing right at the same time you need to see if it is going severe you need to address it to a medical professional right so these absolutely. are the things absolutely absolutely in mind. great great thank you dr uh, purvanand i think uh, that sums it up all on um, how do you act and uh, your formula of i act and react and yeah. that's the way of holistic healing and of course ms sadhna's um, entire yoga and meditation and how she deals with it and also um, how dr pavitra was also talking about and that was actually uh, was my last question that i had 
wanted to ask her, but then she addressed it in the beginning about whether patients will actually follow the uh, doctor's protocol. Uh-huh. And uh, she definitely spoke about how we actually need to go hand in hand mm-hmm. and it always needs to be uh, evaluation. Then only then uh, we need to take up any kind of uh, medications or a yogic practice or uh, any kind of um, uh, practices for, for a holistic living. Um, thank you so much, uh, all panelists today. Um, thank you for your precious time. And I think this was a very enriching discussion that we had. Um, first of all, I would thank, like to thank uh, Dr. Purva Ranade, um, psychologist from Bangalore, for being uh, here with us. Also, Dr. Uh, Pavitra, psychiatrist from Ms. Ram Hospital, also to, uh, for having <laughs> Um, you here in this panel. Uh, Ms. Sadna, pranic healer, yoga and meditation teacher from Anami and so from joining us uh, from the Himachal Pradesh of uh, India. Thank you so much, uh, three of you. And um, I think this gives a very good circle um, to concluding this session. Thank you so much, panelists. Um, have a good day. And um, the millions of listeners of Happiest Health will definitely be benefited with this session. Thank you. And this is Kumaran signing off. Thank you. Thank you so much.